I'm going to have a book for you. Thank you so much. Mike Lane, a very special thank you to Martin for giving this book such a wonderful platform. Ladies and gentlemen, at Crossword, we always aim to be... Thank you, thank you. Uh, well, I'll tell you a little bit about it. I, I actually began writing Dancing with Demons four years ago. And um, I wanted to tell the story of a man who could rise from his own ashes and claim his destiny. A fighter who was, uh, who was propelled forward by his passions, but chained to his demons. And I've been following boxing for a very long time. So for me, it was very interesting to take this fighter and throw him in the ring and see how that went. I also wanted to explore the possibility of a relationship uh, between two volatile and fallen souls and see and figure if there was a possibility for love, for healing. And that's how Dancing with Demons started to take shape. Uh, post that, I, I decided to go into the psyche of the two characters and uh, figure a little more about Karan Pratap Singh and Sonia Kapoor. I, in fact, wrote their monologue first. Uh, so in the very first chapter, when uh, after Karan has lost the fight because he's, you know, and he's banned from the sport for four years, he muses, he says, maybe I broke too many hearts, maybe I crushed too many souls, maybe my own heart was too broken to give a damn about anyone else's. Maybe the wise man is right. Life is like a boxing match. Tons of people will cheer you from the outside, but you're alone in that ring to fight your own battle. And then I turned my attention to Sonia, and I wrote her lines next. And Karan finds those lines uh, in the book much later, uh, in, in, in the novel. And she says, uh, I know I'm not easy to love. On some days, there's no God above. And maybe it's a messed up world into which we have been hurled. And maybe I remind you of you to love yourself, darling, to love me too. And from there, uh, I wanted to explore further. I wanted to see where I wanted to go. I spent a lot of time developing the character, uh, the plot, the structural balance. And there were good writing days and there were bad writing days. And I didn't give up. I was stubborn about that. I'd read a little passage, a very, very short passage for you from the book. June 8th. Saturday, 11 p.m. Jerry had kicked his door down and stormed in. Karan's face and body were sore with the fight with Savan. His left eye shut and bandaged. The doctor had stitched up the laceration. Jerry was drunk out of his mind. Karan had never seen him like that. Bloodshot eyes, unsteady gaze. He roared at Karan, you messed it up. All you had to do was stay off the damn platform. I had trained you to do it, but you messed it up. You know what a Koya ban means? If you ever, ever make a comeback, which I'm not going to be a part of, you'll be too old to compete. You're finished, Karan. You're finished. I <laughs> she used to work with me, so she had, still hasn't gotten over this. You know, yes. this time you did, you know. <laughs> we'll, we'll train you to say Sudhir. Right. Um, so this is just a excerpt from the book. Uh, thunder, rain, lighting. Thunder, rain, lightning. Mumbai was under siege again. A ring-like space lit with halogens. A parking lot in an abandoned, half-constructed mall just outside the city. Rough-looking men sat around under blue tarpaulin sheds, drinking, snorting, rolling joints, smoking up. Money was changing hands. A man went around collecting it. Madan was biting his nails nervously. He did that before every underground fight he put Karan into. Madan was a has, Madan was a has been fighter, a mediocre one at that. He was Karan's only support system during the darkness, effervescent, incorrigible, garrulous, and most importantly, forever around. Just the kind of friend Karan needed on most days. On other days, he was a jackass who put Karan in harm's way for a few thousand bucks. Tonight, was a few thousand bucks kind of night. The monsoon rain looked spectacular under the incandescent yellow gaze of the halogens. The makeshift ring looked surreal as if the gods were about to fight it. It was unintentional, of course. The idea was to watch two wet and bloody fighters beat the life out of each other for a few thousand bucks. Primal. 
a burly man emerged from a van followed by Karan. Four years had taken their toll. Karan was a ravaged version of himself, disabled, sunken eyes, scars from previous fights visible, his eyes wise beyond his 28 years, wise like a man who's seen rock bottom. Jerry would have been heartbroken if Jerry had ever looked back. He hadn't. Jerry had walked away from the Savan debacle, severing all ties with his prodigy, shutting all doors on his favorite student. Karan looked at mother and immediately understood. The bets had been placed on him and he had to win this one. Karan turned to look at his opponent. A drunken thug fired a round in the air from his country-made pistol and commanded the two fighters, Nath Chamiya. Someone grabbed the pistol from his hand. The fool had shot himself in the foot on a previous occasion. The hoodlums roared and grunted as Karan and the muscle man went at each other. Not too far away, a Volvo passenger bus was slicing through the rain. Lightning revealed the face of a beautiful girl. She was Sonia, no older than 27 years, a slim face and large expressive eyes. Very expressive. The kind of eyes that needed to be hidden behind a pair of dark sunglasses to remain inscrutable. Black rim spectacles sat clumsily over the bridge of her sharp chiseled nose. Sonia was wearing a short faded kurta over a pair of old jeans. Her thick hair piled into an unkempt, unkempt bun. It almost seemed like Sonia was attempting to hide behind a cloak of ordinariness. Despite the drab clothes and disheveled hair, you could tell she was beautiful. Sonia sat silently at the window looking thunder in the eye, her calm exterior concealing dark secrets, desperately hoping that both she and her secrets would disappear in Mumbai's cacophony and chaos never to surface again. She hoped Mumbai would become the kind of friend she could trust her darkness to and know the abyss would never betray her and never remind her of it either. Never, ever. She hoped she had left it all behind. The pain, the memories, the five long years spent in a daze. Surprisingly, life had bro hadn't broken her. It had just made her stronger, given her the ability to protect herself from her own vulnerabilities. Her core, fragile and tender, like current she was beautiful misfit, Starting over excited her as did escaping. Life had thrown her an unexpected chance and she grabbed it with both hands, gratefully, greedily. Her childlike emotional core saved her from her own darkness. If she could, she, could have, she would have sat on top of the bus, taking on the rain, letting it wash away her pain. She would have liked to have lightning find her, course through her veins. She would have liked to electro electrocute it back. Thank you. Read very well.